was able to knock off top ranked Kentucky Saturday. The assist could go to the Wildcats media relations department, which reportedly released game notes earlier in the week listing Kentucky as 8-0. Home team was 7-0. The former coach of that home team, Rick Patino, noticed the air and laughed it off. But would he who laughed last? Laugh loudest. Kentucky's last regular season loss, 27 games ago to Louisville at Freedom Hall. This one at Rupp Arena. Let's go to the legal flashback to that aforementioned game. Kentucky jumped out to a 20-9 lead, melted in the second half, and afterwards, Patino said this. You know, you're all going to say, well, he's holding it in, and he really, you know, but I'm telling you the truth. I, I love beating Kentucky as much as I love beating anybody else. Yeah, right. Back to reality, or our version of it. Are you suggesting he's insincere? <laughs> oh, no, that's right. not me. Gerald Finch, remember, just two for ten in that loss last season. He misses. A great game to watch, but even a better game to be involved in. Chuck Hayes, arrows in on the spill, puts it back. Kentucky by five at the half. Less than five minutes to play. Luke Whitehead finds Kendall Dartez. Global takes the lead. Shot 54% from the field in the second half. Everything was going in, including that launch by Tyquan Dean. Top 10 nomination, four-point lead. Less than two minutes left. Kentucky down a six-pack. Turn up your radio. Cassidy to hoop in the worst way. Left side, Fitch. He'll launch a three. Got it! And a foul! How about that gutsy play? Four-point play for Fitch. Kentucky down a deuce, but Francisco Garcia ices it. Then Patino goes deja vu all over again. I truly mean this, you guys won't believe it, but this is no bigger win than any great game. 65-56, Louisville 20-1 in December under Patino the last three seasons. Only loss coming against Kentucky. Remember when Kentucky refused to schedule its in-state rival? Well, they may be thinking that way again. Since Christmas 2002, Kentucky has lost twice to Louisville while going 27-0 in its other regular season games. And another streak that ended, the winner of the football game between those two had lost the basketball game every year since 1994. But the Cardinals beat the Cats in football, too. 14th-ranked Missouri at Memphis, first half off the Missouri turnover. Antonio Burks running the tip drill. Running it to perfection, the senior. Hit his first four shots, 11 points in the first half, but more importantly, whatever young player goes for, the top 10 nomination. Memphis led by nine at the half, now up by five under a minute to play. Jimmy McKinney, off balance, he had 11, we have a three-point game. Final seconds, four-point game. Ricky Paulden for three and a one-point ball game. Paulding at 13. So did Sean Banks. Missed the first here. Hits the second. It's a two-point game. Can McKinney make it Mizzou's game? Show me! No. Memphis, 61-59. The Tigers' third loss in four games. Those three losses in their last four games have been by a combined total of 10 points. Mizzou won its first three games to start the season. Florida hosting Eastern Kentucky. That's David Lee. 12 for 12 Monday against Northwestern. Here's Monday Sports Center. Lee, drive lay in. Gator fans dancing at their team's 57 33 halftime lead. Leaping for another layup. He was 10 for 10. Then Matt Walsh pipes up with an assist. 11 for 11. Finally, it was a drumming. 12 for 12. That was John Anderson and Lee picking up Saturday where he left off Monday. 14 in a row at that point. The putback, 15 for 15 on the lead meter. He had eight points Saturday. Outside in the second half, 16 in a row on the break. 17 field goals in a row. His only four shots of the day. And Florida wins big, 109-63. Lee has played 62 minutes since his last missed field goal. We like it. Bracey Wright and the Hoosiers traveled south to North Texas, and Wright was spec. Spectacular. First to start the game. There went the shutout. Now a three-pointer. North Texas still hasn't scored. They're down 5 nothing. Right again. Three for three. Sometimes you know it's best just to let Bracey Wright's performance wash over you. That's three more. And you know, if you got the hot hand, just let him keep firing. Why not? Why not indeed? You've seen the three, and we can get it from inside that little arc. Six for six. Bracey, turnaround jumper. Seven for seven. And this time... You know what we've missed? Glass me. Hello, eight for eight. The man had 28 in the first half, nine for nine to start the game and finish with 39. Indiana wins a large 79 70. Hot ESPN, USA Today coaches poll garnering 18 first plays, but not exactly a majority there. Does that mean that there are boys? That means they're going to lose tomorrow, probably. Teams two through six in last week's poll all moved up a spot after Saturday's home loss to Louisville. Kentucky drops clear to sixth.
Dukies taking that number two ranking for a spin against Davidson. JJ Reddick taking on they all oh, give me some Luel Dang. Four on three if they hurry. Dang down the line. <laughs> oh man! Wow! Oh yeah, that's Dang! And dang that's all. Top ten nominee, huh? Cameron Crazy's even went crazy again. Duke up 13. Dang goes for three misses. Chris Duhon gets it. Now look at Dang. He got the hand up. Coach, I'm open. Fire King. Jams it in. Oh, to be gonna But I will. I think he made all his homies happy. Duke wins at 88-54. The Commonwealth of Virginia against the people of Georgia Tech. Court is now in session. Marvin Lewis, three. I got that. Lewis had 19. Later in the first, Ishmael Muhammad, the sickest dunk. dunker in college hoops. The sickest. Check out Ishmael. See what, what had happened. Uh, oh, Lord. Dang. No, he didn't. Oh, oh, he would redeem himself. Ishmael. Bunnies, holla at your boy. Tech trying to go 12 and 0 for the first time ever. Second half, Marvin Lewis gets a turnover. Jared Jack to Clarence Moore. I laughed, I cried, it moved me. Tech beating kids by 26 points a game. Former assistant Jesse Evans, Dwayne Mitchell. Mitchell is going to come through with a top 10 nominee. Why? Because of this finish. And then he just hangs there. Gajans up two. Wildcats, though, back up one. Mustafa Shakur finding Andre Igudalo. Igodalo with the uh, three-point play, putting the Wildcats up four. Just under five minutes to go. Brad Boyd, the alley-oop to Mitchell, another top 10 nominee. Lafayette within one. And then Antoine Landry. Landry making things interesting. He had 20. We're tied, though. Arizona attacking. Igodalo finding Hassan Adams. You can count on him. He had 23. Arizona up two. But then Boyd. Looking for some magic and a friend in Mitchell. He had 11. We're tied. Arizona on the inbounds. Check out the two-second shot clock. Igudala in the corner. He's good for there. Arizona up three. Take another look. Now the uh, Lafayette player diving between Igudala's legs, but uh, came up empty. Look at the composure. You know, when the, he's between his legs, Steve. Composure. Yeah, let me tell you. Five seconds left. We have one more chance for the upset. Mm, no. Arizona wins. Lute Olsen with his 300th home victory. UMass, UConn. You didn't think it was going to be close, did you? It's the U game. First half, Ben Gordon goes to work. Ben, 7 of 8 from three-point land. And then later, oh, this guy's so worth watching. Talking about this guy, Charlie Villanueva. Career-high 19 points. Now, not that Ben Gordon isn't worth watching from long distance. UConn wins the so-called U game. Ben Gordon, 34 points. Georgia and 16th ranked Pittsburgh, but was Pittsburgh really 16th ranked even without their leading scorer, Carl Krauser? Maybe they were 17th or 18th. He was out with a groin injury. Mark McCarroll from three. He already had his career high with 18. That was in the first half. Second half, McCarroll getting some help from his teammates. Antonio Graves sets the pick and tells him to go, 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 and McCarroll to the hoop and takes the feed. 55, 38 in favor of Pittsburgh. More for McCarroll. Using one screen from Jaron Brown, uses a second screen from Yuri Demetris. Leaves him wide open. McCarroll, 26 on 11 of 12 shooting. Pittsburgh wins even without Krauser. Back to the baskets, Quinn Snyder and the 22nd ranked Tigers facing the Belmont Bruins located nowhere near the racetrack. They're all actually located in Nashville. Their conference, Atlantic Sun, 3,300 go to the school. Seasons in Division One, 8. What about their team, Nick Otis? Likes the view, putting Belmont up three. Belmont was winning, yeah. Training another three. Belmont actually shot more threes than twos in this game, 35 to 20. That's Steve Draven with the air ball, but Jesse Snyder with a putback. Belmont now up three on their way to sending Missouri to a third straight loss. Belmont shocking Missouri. Said Quinn Snyder about his team's performance, we should boo ourselves. Number 15, Wisconsin taking on Alabama. This is uh, Wisconsin's only game in the southern part of the country this regular season. So they go from 36 degrees in Madison to a nice 62 in Tuscaloosa. Toasty 62. Good change for the holidays. Oh, Sun out. You drew up there, Lynn. Thank you. Dave Mater. He makes it happen. Badgers within five, but they shot just 39% in the second half. Kennedy Winston to Chuck Davis. Davis, 8 of 16 from the field, and it's a top 10 nominee. 
15 of his career high 21 coming in that second half. And then Ernest Shelton, he had 20. Alabama beats Wisconsin. They shot 59% in the second half. 10th ranked St. Joe's visiting Delaware. Phil Martelli and his mascot looking on. Second half, Hawks up seven. Delonte West and Jameer Nelson. The Hawks enjoying a 39-30 lead. Second half, St. Joe's up by 15. Nelson able to pick up the loose ball. Why not? Pull up three. You know, the Hawk never dies. Hawks lead 48-30. Nelson at 20. Hawks by 15. Tyrone Barley to Dwayne Jones. Jones at 14 and 11. St. Joe's an easy win. 14th ranked Louisville entertaining Toledo. Cardinals are 20 and 1 in the month of December under Coach Rick Patino. Toledo Sammy Vijegas. We arrow him. Luke Whitehead sets the pick. Backdoor Otis George finds Brandon Jenkins for the layup. Louisville's Kendall D'Artez sets the pick on Justin Ingram. Francisco Garcia, alley oop and Larry O'Bannon. And Louisville up 13, it's all working. Garcia sets the pick on Florentino Valencia. Nuha Diakite finds Luke Whitehead for the alley oop. Whitehead at 19, and Louisville rolls in a big way. A team from the Ohio Valley Conference at 24 0. Gerald Fitch misses, but uh, Shakiri Elaine does not. Kentucky up 14. Good cleanup there on the basket. Second half, Fitch this time not missing. You get three points for that. Kentucky up 16, but here comes P. Anthony Davis, AD for three. Davis again. Davis is open. Let's go, P. Another three-pointer. 15 points. I beg your pardon. Four of six from far away. That's just a shout-out to Fly. Maurice Hampton then laying on the break. Tubby Smith not to happy. Kentucky only up two for the love of Ashley Judd. Late in the second half, Chuck Hayes, though, to Cliff Hawkins. And one. Three-point play. Kentucky wins at 61.